If you already know that Notion was powerful with all the filters and sorts that we can use to visualize our data, hold your excitement because Notion has just released a feature that is going to make all of that look ancient. Okay, so first, a little bit of background. The way that we draw conclusions from all the data that we have in our systems is mainly by using filters so we can see just what matters and by sorting it so we can organize what we are seeing. For example, let's say that we want to see our tasks grouped by priority. So the most normal thing will be to create a board view like this one, but maybe we need a little bit more granularity. Let's say that we also want to distinguish to which projects each of the tasks correspond and that we can also group that by priority. So before this new feature that I'm going to unveil, what we will do probably is just to show the project property. Now we see the project everywhere and maybe even sort it by project. So like this, we can see all the priorities and all the projects sorted. But I don't know what you think, but I think this is not a very visual form of separating the tasks by project and priority, because I will still have to scan. I don't know, things are not very clear here. So here's where this new feature comes handy. This new feature is called grouping, and it allows us to go one step further in terms of how granular we are seeing our data. So basically this feature allows us to create subgroups within the views that we were already used to using in Notion. And coming back to our example, the way to use this feature is going to be coming here to the three dots and going here to the newly created button subgroup. And here we can select which is going to be the subgroup for this view over here. So as we wanted to see which are the different projects for the different priorities, we can select here project and this new view is going to appear. We can of course hide the empty groups. Okay, so now I'm just showing, as you can see here, the four projects that has tasks on them. So right now, things are so much more clear. If I just want to focus on my Notion business tasks, I can see here all the priorities that I have. Same with YouTube and the same with all my other projects. And I don't know if you start to feel it right now, but there is so much to unpack here. There is so many different possibilities because now even we can group by relations and by formulas which we couldn't in the past. So think about that for a second. Okay, at the end of the video, I'm going to unveil why this is such a big deal. Oh, and by the way, this feature has been enabled for all the views except calendar, which kind of makes sense. It will be too cluttered to do this in a, in a calendar view. Okay, so now with all this theory out of the way, let's get to the real meat of this video, which are the use cases that I found more useful since starting to test this feature. The first clear use case is task management, and this is very similar to the previous example that I just showed you. So here, basically, this is what I am actually using daily right now. I am separating the task in the statuses that they are going to go through, no started in progress and done, and in the Y axis, I'm separating them by the outcome that those tasks are going to help me achieve. And why do I like this this way? Because like this, I can focus on one specific outcome and then bulk do all of the tasks related to that outcome. And I don't know why, but I prefer to do things this way because I prefer to just focus on one thing and get everything done related to that thing and then move to the next one. So here, this grouping feature comes very handy. The second useful use case is time boxing or time in the day boxing. I remember back in the day having a client that she wanted to separate all the tasks that she needed to do in the day in morning, afternoon and evening. So what we ended up doing was creating three different linked databases, all of them with the same filter, the task that she needed to do today, but with the only difference that the first one was filtered by morning, the second one by afternoon, and the third one by evening. And we hide them all in three different toggles so she can just focus on what she needed to get done depending on the part of the day. But with this feature now available to us, we're able to do this automatically. We will just have to create, as we can see here, one extra property that is for the time of the day. In this example, I have selected these three and then group it over here by that property. So let's say that we are in the morning, we will just be able to collapse these two and we will just be focusing on this one. Let's say that is afternoon and maybe we have already done these three, but we haven't finished this one. So we can open here and maybe we can drag this to the afternoon and close the morning and we can continue with our day like this. So this is what I call time in the day boxing, but feel free to change this by exact time. So for example, this can be from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., this from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., this from 11 to 12, 
And like this, you can create a very easy way to do time boxing within Notion. The third use case is for managing projects. If you work with several people and you want to manage or see the work that they are doing right now, this feature will also be very handy. Here we can see in this test space that we have this company projects database where we are showing how long each of the project is going to take and who is the project owner. So let's use this grouping feature to see how this view is going to change. We go here, group, and we are going to group by the project owner and as you can see this are relational property which is something that as i said we couldn't do before so right now i am seeing all the different projects separated by the project owner which is so much more clean than seeing everything together so i can see that the, this marketing gal is with these two projects at the same time and i can see the workload of everyone and of course here is time to get creative we can even group these projects by the amount of revenue, for example, that they are going to bring us. So to do this, we can go again to group and change this grouping by the revenue property. And here he's asking us, which is the range that we are going to be using. So here I'm gonna put this to maybe 20,000 and in groups of every 2,000. And also I'm going to select to hide empty groups and that is descending. So the higher numbers are up top. Okay, so to make it more beautiful, let's make that this is between 8 and 10. Okay, and now we have our projects with the project owner separated by the revenue that they're bringing to the company. So if we are to prioritize any of these projects, it will be this one because it's bringing the highest amount of revenue. The fourth use case, and probably this is one of my favorites, is for managing our finances in Notion. This is the template that I use for managing my finances. Here we can see the money movements database. This is all the entries, all the incomes and expenses that I have. This is the months database. So you can see that every entry here is linked to a month. So then I can do all these calculations, see which is the income, the business expenses, the profit, monthly expenses, profit, and the percentage that I have saved. So before in the old way of using Notion, if I wanted to do this separation between years and have all these calculations also done by year, I would have needed, and this is what I was actually doing, to create two different linked databases, one with 2021st and the other one with 2020. And every year create a new linked database manually and filter by that year so I can get all the totals per year. But now with this grouping feature, I just have to create one only linked database and group it by year, which is a relational property. And if I just want to see which has been the whole profit of this year, I can calculate it over here. I can sum, which is the net profit. And I can even close like this. And I can see here in this tiny view, which has been the total profit of my business by year. But things don't stop here. We are also able to group different entries by their date. So if we come here to this money movements database, I will want to watch this by the month that they've been created. So let's group them by the created time because normally when I create them is when they happen. So let's group by created. And here he asked me which kind of grouping I wanna do. I will choose by month. And okay, this was test data. So I created all of this in May and I created this one in October. But you can see that I can separate all of them by month and I will choose to group this reverse chronological so the more recent appears on the top. And if I want, I can also calculate here the total income for the month and just have the last month visible over here. Another very useful use case that I'm using this feature for is for tracking my subscriptions. I want to be able to pinpoint which of the subscriptions are taking the most money out of my pocket every month. And this is the view that I have come up with. Before, I was just using the personal and professional columns. But now what I can do, as you can see here, is separate everything by how much I'm spending per month in those tools. So I'm subgrouping by the monthly price. I'm sorting then descending, so the highest is on the top and within the monthly price, I'm doing this range, which honestly I can change to five. So is more granular. And like this, 
I'm able to pinpoint that ConvertKit is taking the most of the money in every month. And then these ones, and now everything is correctly separated. Another use case that I'm using this for is for my shopping list. Some time ago, I developed a system that creates my shopping list automatically. So I just tell the system the place that I want to create in the week. And the system is going to output the ingredients that I need for making those dishes. So then I can just go to the shopping mall and buy those things. But here I have a problem because not every ingredient I can find in every shop that I go. So I decided to create a new property that tells me in which supermarket I can actually find this ingredient. So what I was doing before, I was just sorting these ingredients by supermarket and then the ones that are on top are supermarket one and the ones that are below are supermarket two. But some of them I can find in both places. And I don't know, everything was, was a mess. So now with this feature, finally, I can just go here and group them by the supermarket. I can hide the ones with no supermarket. So right now, let's say that I'm in this supermarket over here called Alcampo. So I can just hide this one because I cannot buy anything from here and just focus on the ingredients that I can actually buy where I'm at and just check them and they will disappear. And there is so many more use cases that we can give this feature to. In fact, this was one of the hardest videos to script for me because there was so many options that I didn't exactly know what to show you. So I hope I did my best. But if you think about it, we can use this for much more. For example, now that we can group by relations in the board view, we can actually use relations as statuses and create one database that is going to be the statuses database that is going to be shared by all the different databases that are going to be using statuses. So we can see at a bird's eye view, everything that is in progress within our system, all the projects that are in progress, all the tasks, all the events, everything. And I left the best idea for the end of the video. I said that we can also use formulas for grouping information. So this means that we can actually create automated statuses for our tasks, for example. So if we can find something that always needs to happen for a task to change status, let's say every time that we assign a task to a person, we can actually recreate that with formulas, with if statements, and make the status of the task change automatically. So if we can find those scenarios in which the task is going to change status, we can actually automate the statuses of the task and they will be running through the Kanban board. Well, I'm sure I'm leaving dozens of different other use cases on the table. So feel free to add yours and the ways that you are using this feature in the comments of the video, because I'm sure that this is going to be very helpful for everyone that reads the comments. And by the way, if you picked the template of my finance manager that I share in this video, I have already updated the template with this new feature. And if you want to see a little bit more about it, I'm going to link the video over here in which I explain how this finance manager work. And by the way, this is one of the highest performing videos in this channel. So I'm sure you will like it. So that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.